Hi everybody. This vehicle is a 2008 Chevy Cobalt and today I'm testing current draw on the fuel injectors using my Autel scope. So I want to show you how I have it set up both with the amp clamp on which wires I have it on and also what I'm using as a trigger but most importantly the settings I have in the laptop because I find that when you're doing testing with a scope knowing how to set up the scope in the computer to get the right display on the screen is really the most important and probably the most difficult part of the job although I also had a little bit of trouble setting up this one with where to hook the amp clamp to so I'll show you that and compare it to the schematics so let's just start out looking at the car so this is a 2.2 liter four-cylinder engine and fuel injectors are up front and I'm basically using an amp clamp around the four ground wires that go to each one of the injectors and I'm using that to get a waveform pattern on my screen so I can see how much current each injector is drawing. And to figure out which one is which, I have a trigger set up by probing the power connectors going into this injector, number four, at the back of the engine. So, on my screen, this is what I'm getting in a display. The red one is showing the voltage draw on this injector, so I'm using that as a trigger point. And then all four of these blue uh, current ramps are for each one of the injectors. Now if I didn't have this voltage trigger set up, I wouldn't know which cylinder is which looking at it in the screen. Because all I would have is a pattern of current draw with no reference to know which one was for which cylinder. So, and there's really no other way to get it that's any easier. Uh, instead of pulling power from this one injector, I could have pulled power from one of the coils and done it that way. Um, but it's not like I could set up a secondary ignition like we would normally do uh, by clamping onto one of the spark plug wires uh, because this engine has coil on plugs, so uh, we don't have a way of getting secondary ignition to use as a trigger. Uh, so, no big deal. Just take our power and ground connectors and hook up little needle probes and we just put them right into the back of the connector. So basically just back probing it uh, right next to each wire. And then that will give us the red trace on the screen. And then the blue one, like I said, is coming from this amp clamp. So I'll start out by showing you the settings I have. So this is my small amp clamp, my CC65. And I have this set for 10 milliamps equals one millivolt. Uh, because if I had it for 100, it just wouldn't display right on the screen. Um, so there's that. Now we'll look at the settings I have in the screen itself. So for red, Channel A, oops, get that back up here. Uh, I like to set this up manually. Uh, so, of course, it's a 12 volt system, so I have it set for a 20 amp scale. And then the red one is on the left side of the screen. So, there's my 12 volt. So, when this injector fires, it's actually a little bit higher. It's probably you know, right in between, so like 14, maybe the high 14s when it fires. And then for the blue, channel C, I have it set for my CC65. Let's try and get that to come up a little more clearly. And I have it on a 5 amp scale. So on the right side of the screen, that's my amp scale. So it goes from 0 in the middle up to 5 amps at the top. Now I probably could turn this down to maybe 2 amp scale and these blue traces would be higher on the screen. Um, but this is good enough for what I want to see. Basically on this test, I'm looking to see that each injector 
has a similar pattern and that I don't see any abnormalities uh, from one injector to another. And when I look across here, oops, trying to get this to focus, each one of these looks the same to me. So that's good. That's what I want to see. Uh, as for my sample rate, uh, I like to use a pretty high rate. Man, this thing's really not staying on focus. So I have uh, 10 million samples. So if I go down here, my sample quantity at the bottom is 10 million. So that gives me a really high resolution if I wanted to zoom in on one of these uh, waveforms uh, and see much greater detail uh, because this uh, this software program likes to default to 1 million, which is cool, but 10 million just gives you a much better picture. Uh, and then finally, we'll look at the time base. So in this situation, I want to see one full set of triggers for, you know, basically one full set of injectors being fired all at the same time. So I can compare cylinders 1, 2, 3, and 4 uh, all across the screen at one time. Uh, and in order to do that, I need a 20 millisecond per division time scale. So what that means is, when I go across the bottom of the screen, I start out with zero milliseconds, and then my first line over is 20, my second line over is 40, then 60, then 80, then 100, so that's 100 milliseconds, then 120, 40, 60, 80, and 200. So if we look at this, uh, just going across the screen and kind of rough it out, uh, at the 20 millisecond mark, that's where this cylinder is firing. And then you have the next, next, and next. So in order for all four cylinders, for all four cylinders to fire, it's taking, let's see, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, about 120 milliseconds for, you know, one full set. Um, so if I was to shorten this, instead of being 20 milliseconds per div, if I went to 10, I wouldn't be able to see it on the screen because instead of having 200 across the entire screen, I'd only have 100. Uh, but it takes the engine 120 milliseconds for all four cylinders to fire, so that's why I need the screen to show me a total of 200 milliseconds. Now, I could raise this uh, and make it be, say, 50 milliseconds or 100, and basically what that would do is bring all of these waveforms closer together. Uh, so I may be, instead of just having two red traces on this screen, I may have four or eight, um, which is cool also. Uh, but you know, then you have to zoom in, and it's just harder to see that every one is uniform. And it's also harder to see defects from one waveform to the other. So that's why I like to have it set up so I get one full set, all four cylinders, on one screen as tight as I can and that's what these settings give me. So again real quick to review channel A 20 volt DC channel C I set it up for my CC65 clamp at 5 amps and then I like a high sample rate 10 million which is the highest this goes and then a 20 millisecond whoops, 20 millisecond per division time scale. So that's how I get my pattern for uh, all four cylinders to fire. Uh, so if you want to see the scope I'm using, uh, this is an Autel Maxi Scope. I've used this in some other videos. I'll show you what model we got here. MP408. Pretty good scope. Uh, there's a couple things uh, I don't like about it, which basically have to do with the software. Uh, but the scope itself seems fine to me. Uh, so let's just uh, look at the wiring real quick uh, because I did have some issues trying to get all four of these current waveforms on the screen. Uh, and it basically had to do with a mismatch between uh, the factory wiring schematic uh, and what's actually on the engine itself. And I'd have to do a little bit of research to double check on this 
but I think there was a change somewhere around 07, 08 maybe, uh, where GM changed the wiring harness, uh, or there may actually be an engine model change, I'm not sure. Uh, but I've noticed a couple other things when I looked at drawings and all data uh, that were just slightly off uh, from what's on the actual engine itself. Um, so, if we look here, uh, this is just the engine management schematic, and here's all four injectors. And, you know, they, uh, what I actually, what I wanted to do to get these waveforms is I wanted to just grab the pink wire, uh, which supplies power uh, from the fuse, uh, which is uh, that blue one, fuse 15. Uh, I wanted to grab just that one pink wire. Um, but when I looked in the harness here, uh, there's a whole bunch of pink wires. Uh, and there's some that I thought, well, maybe it's faded, and that's why it, I'm not finding the right one. You know, sometimes pink turns into like a tannish or a brownish color uh, after, how old is this, 13 years? Uh, but I, I just couldn't figure out which one of these was the power for all four uh, injectors. Uh, so I decided instead, well, you know, I'll just, I'll pull the grounds that are going back to the, uh, going back to the ECU. Uh, and I'll just probe them. As long as I get all four of them, then I'll get all four waveforms on the screen. So it's, you know, six and one half dozen, doesn't really matter. Uh, but I did have some troubles there. So if we look here, we have injectors, uh, you know, we go right to left for some reason. Injector one, two, three, and four. So the pink is common. That's the power for all the injectors. And then the other four wires, that's the grounds, because uh, these injectors are grounded through the ECM. That's what makes them trigger. So if you look, injector one says it's a black wire. Well, these are all the wires that go to the whole front of the engine. So, you know, that's the uh, throttle motor, that's the injectors, uh, whatever else is down there, maybe a map sensor on there or something. Uh, but all these, all these wires go down to the front and it says black. And the only one here that's black is black with a white trace. It's this one right here. Uh, and if you know automotive wiring, black with a white trace is not black. Uh, you know, there's black with a white trace has a white trace for a reason, and that's a different wire on here. I don't know which one, but so that one was so that one's wrong. There is no plain black wire in this harness. Uh, then we have light green with a black. That one actually worked out. I got that one here. Uh, and then we have pink with a black. That one worked out. Although I had to figure out which one because right next to it, here's another pink with a black. And is that the only other one? Yeah, that's the only other one. So we have two pink with a black and I had to figure out which one it was just by you know, putting it into the clamp seeing if I had a trace or not. And when I tried the other pink one, I didn't get a trace for that. You know, one of the cylinders was uh, was missing in the waveform, so I knew that was the wrong wire. Uh, and then light blue with a black. Uh, so looking through the harness, there was only one that was even close to blue, and that one worked out. Uh, so the one missing wire was the black one and as it turns out, the one I actually grabbed was tan. Because if we look here, it shows that the black one does go down away, and at some point, there's a splice or a connector in the harness, and it changes from black to tan. Uh, but then again, when I look through the harness, I have two tan wires. So there's this one, just plain tan, no tracer, and another tan one with no tracer. So those were my, uh, actually, is this one the other one I had a problem with? No, that's plain green. I thought it was green with a black stripe. So it was these two wires that gave me trouble because I didn't know which tan and I didn't know which pink with a black trace was the right one. Uh, so I ended up finding them uh, just by trial and error. 
and process of elimination and I ended up getting all of the ground wires for all four injectors, put them in the clamp, set it for 10 milliamps per one millivolt uh, and then I was able to get, oh, it disappeared again, able to get my current waveforms. So still don't know where that pink wire is at. All of them say pink. There's supposed to be a junction somewhere in this harness. I can't find it. And there's actually no pink wire leaving these in, this injector area unless it's underneath this air intake. Uh, and then it, for some reason it changes pink to pink with a black stripe. So it may, it may be this pink with a black stripe wire, but I don't know. So anyway, that's how I have it set up, and that's how I got my current waveforms, and that's how I got a trigger point so I can basically go back now. I can verify that this is cylinder number four, and then I can compare firing order to find out which current waveform goes to which cylinder, uh, which really doesn't matter because they all look good, so it's not like I have a problem with one of the injectors anyway, so, which is really what I wanted to find out, so pretty cool. Well, if you have any questions or any comments, post them below. And if you're working on a Chevy Cobalt and trying to set your scope up and have issues with getting a good waveform on the screen, I hope the content in this video uh, can help you out. Because uh, like I said in the beginning, it's all about these settings you have in the laptop screen to actually get it to display the waveforms in that fashion so you can make sense of it. So pretty cool. Well, if you have any questions or any comments, post them below. And thanks for watching. And if you like my videos, please give a thumbs up. And also, please subscribe.